my name is Camilla Hill. I am Debbie Hill's daughter, and I also coach field hockey here at William & Mary. She's my mom, but she was also everyone else's mom. She thought of her team as her kids, and just kind of that overwhelming, caring nature for everyone involved in the tribe. She loves William & Mary through and through. So mom being a coach was I really feel like a part of my identity too. Um, when I was an infant, um, so that I wouldn't get hit with flying volleyballs off, they used to put me in the volleyball cage. The, there was a cage that had like a lid on it. <laughs> and um, So they would put the baby in there and then they could push me around the court so that I wouldn't get hit by balls that were flying off. And they joke that some of the freshmen's responsibilities used to be, um, okay, don't forget the balls, don't forget this, don't forget that, and all the baby stuff. So we have pictures of freshmen from the 80s, um, you know, with me under one arm and all of the diaper bag and the volleyballs. So that, that was my childhood. Everything about volleyball here at William & Mary, I feel like, formed me. When I think about my mom's career, um, I don't really think about the fact that she won all of these CAA championships in a row and she had a great record and she's one of the winningest coaches in NCAA history and I don't think of all those stats because when mom talks about her career she talks about um, how she had an athlete who was a slotted athlete and then ended up graduating Phi Beta Kappa and she talks about her players who are Peace Corps workers and who are doctors and who are lawyers and she talks about their kids and how those kids are doing and she talks about all of those things. So when I was getting ready um, for this, I went through and I kind of read over her bio that was in her last media guide and I, I was like, wow, you know, she was a really good coach too. Like. Not only was she just an awesome person, but she was really good at her job. I mean, I remember when we won the CAAs and how excited we all were and how excited she was and how excited the kids were. Um, but you know, those aren't the things that she talks about when she's talking about her career. She talks about the kids and how they just made her life so much better. And the things I remember most have very little to do with volleyball and more to do with the college and how William and Mary um, and my mom shaped people. Um, yeah, I, I just think what a great what a great person to honor, and I think that this really is a good move for the athletic department to show this is the kind of person that we want to honor with with our Hall of Fame. Mom, I couldn't be more proud of you. I'm so excited to be here tonight and to be with you while you get inducted into the Hall of Fame. I love you, congratulations. Please welcome to the podium, Debbie Hill. Okay, well that's cheating and I'm just going to tell you a little story here. My family bet me $20 that I could not get through this speech without crying. I sat outside in the car in the front yard this afternoon and I practiced and the last time I did it, I did not cry. She cheated. She did not tell me that this was... I thought Melissa was doing the introduction. I asked Melissa to, to anyway. So, you cheated. I, I think I'm going to owe you $20. Um, thank you. It's really, really an honor to be here. And um, thank you to, to the Hall of Fame committee for including me in this great group of inductees. And I, you know, Anne said that she really enjoys seeing some of these athletes. And, and knowing us as coaches, I got to see every one of these, I call them kids, these young people play. And of course, I coached with Dan, so it is really a special treat to be here tonight with, with all of you. Thank you, Terry, my last boss. My first boss is back in the corner. 
back over there. And it is really an, a, a huge honor to be standing here. Um, it was early June, 1976. I had just turned 24 and my life was about to change. I was standing in a phone booth with a broken door, dump trucks rumbling by at a softball tournament next to a highway in Johnson City, Tennessee. I was on the phone with Millie West, the incomparable Millie West. Millie was the women's athletic director at the College of William and Mary and she had just asked me if I would like to come to work at William and Mary. As I said, it was June, I'm pretty sure I was not their first choice for this job. <laughs> the majority of you in this room know Millie and you also know that when she asks you to do something, you say yes. So. I said, yes, I'd, I'd love to, and actually, I was thrilled to death. I'd love to take the position. She said, told me that I would be coaching women's volleyball and women's track, and that was half of my job. And the other half of my job was to uh, teach physical education activity classes 50% of the time. And um, I said, that sounds like fun. She said, uh, the salary is $10,000 a year. I said, that's awesome. I that seemed like a lot of money to me at the time. <laughs> and I remember thinking that I was just about the luckiest person in the world. And you know what? I was the luckiest person in the whole world because that phone call led me to this day and everything that's transpired between. Thank you, Millie. Thank you for taking a chance on that 24-year-old with no collegiate coaching experience 38 years ago. So I arrived in Williamsburg, and believe me, I was a work in progress. But I was surrounded by smart, good people like Millie, like Pat Crow, like Tommy Lambert, like Barb Wetters. And I had a lot of help about learning, with learning how to do filing and budgeting and scheduling and coaching. And editing, I had a lot of help with editing. I remember the first time that I was asked to write out my team's uh, rules and regulations. Okay, I came up with, always do the right thing. <laughs> I thought it was kind of profound, actually. <laughs> when I showed her my proposed rules and regulations, my good friend, Dr. Patricia Crow, and my Lamaze coach, by the way, said, ah, let's just flesh that out a little bit. <laughs> and she helped me do that. In 1982, I took a year off and I went to work as an assistant coach at Louisiana State University. I hope we don't have any LSU graduates here. They were a top 20 program at the time and they were big time, but it was big time athletics at its worst. I'm pretty sure that every player I coached that year is now working at McDonald's. After that year at LSU, I came running back to the College of Knowledge filled with a burning desire to prove that you could be good in the classroom and be good on the court and not have to sell your soul to do it. I wanted everything about our program to reflect my desire to develop the whole person, not just the athlete. One day we're jogging around the gym, warming up for practice, and I was brainstorming with the team. We were all just going around in circles. And I was trying to come up with a slogan that represented William & Mary Volleyball. I said, you know, William & Mary Volleyball, it, it's not just a game. It's, it's, and the player running next to, me, next to me said, it's a way of life. And that was it. William & Mary Volleyball, it's not just a game. It's a way of life. That became our slogan. And that player was Melissa Aldridge Shelton. It makes me enormously proud that Melissa took over our program when I retired five years ago. She continues to put the person before the player and make William and Mary volleyball more than just a game. Everyone who's coached knows that the key to success as a head coach is to always have great assistance. I was never a great technician of the game, but I have to say, I did a marvelous job of choosing my assistant coaches. And they all kept me looking like a pro all the time. Three of them are here tonight. Julie sang 
And Alana, would you all, would you three stand up? And Carolyn Elwood was here earlier. I thank you three for always having my back. And speaking of having my back, let me tell you a little bit about my family as though you don't know some of it already. <laughs> my family, we bleed green and gold. The love of my life, Dr. Camilla Buchanan, is a 1966 graduate of William & Mary and is also a member of the Athletic Hall of Fame. I don't know how many married couples there are in the Athletic Hall of Fame, but we're one. When I retired five years ago, I'm pretty sure she did a little happy dance that she would no longer have to sit in the stands stifling swear words at every missed serve and shanked pass. She's my biggest fan, and no one could ever ask for a more long-suffering spouse. You know this part, too. Our daughter, Camilla Lee Hill, was raised in a dare gym. You saw the proof and was a that's right jojo and that's my number one fan by the way jordan campbell thank you for being here um so she was raised in in uh, adair gym and and it was she was not in a cage it was a ball cart <laughs> and she was a bit of a terror on rollerblades as she zoomed around the corridors in william and mary hall as a youngster thanks to peel hawthorne and tess ellis Camilla Lee enrolled at William & Mary in 2007 and became a starting goalie for Tribe Field Hockey, where she continued to terrorize opposing players who dared come within range of her cage. She graduated in 2011 and is now the assistant field hockey coach for the Tribe. Thank you, Camilla and Camilla Lee, for being my biggest fans and staunchest supporters, and thank you for loving William & Mary as much as I do. But the real stars of the show tonight are my former players. All coaches make their own fair share of mistakes, and I most certainly did. And I'm not talking about the time that I drove the athletic department van under a low overhang with the luggage rack on the top and knocked it right off the top. I'm not talking about those kind of mistakes. I'm talking about mistakes in lineup and training and playing time. So thank you to all of my players who put up with those mistakes and still place their trust in me. You challenged me, you supported me, you put up with my silly songs and my bad jokes. And I'm sure it wasn't always easy. What has been easy is laughing at all the old stories and I have to bring this one out. I never get tired of hearing about the time that I sent the team outside on a nice spring day for a warm-up jog down to Confusion Corner and back before practice. I'm being nice, right? Let them go outside and run, not being hot at Dare Gym. Well, instead of going for a run, they all jumped into a couple of cars and raced off to the Baskin Robbins for a quick ice cream cone before they came back. They, this is a true story. Before they came back, for practice, they stopped by the water fountain, sprinkled water on their faces so that it looked like they had broken into a, a sweat. <laughs> Never underestimate the ingenuity of the William & Mary athlete. <laughs> and those athletes do represent my finest moments. Sure, we won a few volleyball matches and we took some championships, but the after college successes of my former players are by far my proudest accomplishments. They are trial attorneys, college professors, and emergency room trauma doctors. We have collegiate coaches, college professors, dentists, public health professionals, scientists, veterinarians, moms, business, women's, business, business women, directors of major research labs, and faculty members at major medical schools. And they prove every day that William and Mary volleyball is not just a game. <laughs> it's a way of life. $20. I, I'm not finished yet. So now I think you can see why I remember that day in June so clearly. Not only did William and Mary give me a career that I thrived on, this university also gave me friends that I treasure and a family that I live for. Thank you, William and Mary, for giving me the opportunity to shape lives and love doing it.